Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and welcome back to the Explain series. So the Galaxy S8 is a head-turning phone, and there are plenty of awesome new things about it, but one thing that kind of went under the radar, I don't even know if it was officially said during the announcement, is that this is the first phone in the world to ship with Bluetooth 5.0. So you've probably heard of Bluetooth, and you may even know if your phone has Bluetooth 4.0 or 4.1 or 4.2, but generally those different iterations of Bluetooth are just slight improvements to things like pairing time and low energy modes, etc. It doesn't really change the way you use it, you just know your phone has Bluetooth. But 5.0, that's a pretty big new number. That seems to signify a sort of a bigger change. So there's a couple things that you should know about it. So what is new with Bluetooth 5.0? There are three main things that all enable one pretty dope new feature. So number one is it's two times faster. So Bluetooth pairing is generally not that quick of a process. You don't have to do it very often, but it's pretty slow. If you're someone like me who's connecting a lot of Bluetooth speakers as I test a bunch of them for a video, then you know that it's not super quick. But doing it with this Galaxy S8 with Bluetooth 5.0 shows a direct advantage of data transferring twice as fast, which is the pairing process is a bit quicker and there's also less delay. You ever watch a video like on Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones and like the audio is a little bit behind the video, like someone's talking and then you hear it like a split second behind? It's usually not too bad, but that actually does get solved a bit with Bluetooth 5.0, that delay is a lot smaller. So that's data speed. Number two is four times the range. That's actually been a real world weakness of Bluetooth, especially in my past. It depends on what pair of headphones you use, but sometimes you can be listening to music in your headphones and you leave your phone in another room, you walk a little bit too far away and it starts cutting out and then eventually stops. That happens like all the time. The theoretical maximum range of Bluetooth 4 was about 50 meters with a direct line of sight, but about 10 meters in everyday use through walls and around corners and around different rooms of a house. So 30 feet tops. So that means you can't get very far away from your phone if you're trying to listen to music or if you walk around a corner, it's gonna cut out and that's kind of annoying. Bluetooth 5, like I said, quadruples that max range. So a theoretical maximum of 200 meters with a direct line of sight or about 40 meters around a house or indoors. So that's, that's 120 feet. That's a legitimate serious improvement. So that's not just like downstairs and around the corner. That's like you can walk out in your backyard while your phone's upstairs. You can walk to the front yard or around the gym. Whatever you gotta do, you can get a lot further from your audio source with Bluetooth 5.0. And then the number three improvement is eight times the data throughput of Bluetooth 4. And this is where a lot of the real world improvements and dope features start to get enabled. So first of all, this has benefits way beyond just like audio. Like I'm talking about speakers because usually that's what we use Bluetooth for. But Bluetooth can also be used for things like Bluetooth beacons and parking meters and small wireless things. Those can all also be helped by more data throughput through Bluetooth 5. But if you think about a Bluetooth stream like a highway, it used to be a two lane highway going 40 miles an hour for 20 miles. Now it's a 16 lane wide mega highway going 80 miles an hour for 80 miles. It's a completely different story. So having all these lanes of data moving so fast enables a pretty sweet feature, uh, which Samsung calls and which will call since they're kind of first to it, dual audio, which lets you output to two different Bluetooth speakers at the same time. So let me demo that real quick. I'm gonna connect to Bluetooth one at a time here. Plays the sound whenever it turns on. So this is one speaker. It's pretty decently loud. But let's say I want that stereo listening experience. I want to have two different outputs at the same time. Just bear with me here, I'm gonna connect this one now. So you go into the dual audio mode, you turn it on, and then you make sure both of your sources are connected that you wanna to play to. Turbo is paired. Okay, and then we hit play. I'll be hustling until then. Hustling until then. She's the worst to go in. So the fact that that works so easily is awesome. You might have noticed there's this, this super tiny delay in the, the audio timing. One of them plays like a tiny bit before the other one. That can be negotiated just by moving them further apart. You'll notice it way less. But yeah, this used to be a lot more difficult to do. Like you've heard of Sonos, right? Sonos 
essentially made its living of a couple of things, but mainly the fact that you could connect to a bunch of different speakers all around the house in different places at once. You had to get certain Sonos speakers and you had to have that Sonos app, and then you connect the app to the mesh network that the Sonos speakers create amongst themselves, and when you plug that into those speakers, then you'll get the one audio source among several Sonos. But you had to buy those very expensive Sonos speakers to make that happen. This Bluetooth 5.0 and this feature enables that Sonos experience on any Bluetooth speaker. So that is Bluetooth 5. More data, more range, and faster speeds. And it's good to know about a phone that you may potentially get later this year. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm just looking for a freak. Someone who likes to me.